All right, welcome back to another video, and today we're going to be making a two-piece swim bait. And this lure is going to have a fin on the top and fin on the back, and uh, we'll see how it goes. But thank you guys so much for watching, and I saw some of your comments in the last video, and I'm so glad that you guys enjoy the videos, and uh, it's definitely a lot of fun to make. So let's get started. All right, so with this lure, there's going to be four different spots for lead. And uh, in past videos, I kind of just add lead to the point where the lure sinks, but... This one, since it's kind of going to be like a, a glide swim bait, I want to make sure that it sinks very slow and kind of stays suspended in the water. So we're going to experiment with that a little bit. And uh, so like I mentioned, there's four different spots for those. We want to make sure the weight's evenly distributed throughout the lure. And we also have a joint here. And then there's two separate fins made out of lexa polycarbonate. And I think I'm going to paint the gills, but I'm not quite sure yet. So there it is, and let's get to work. So here's the basic shape we're going to be making. Again, thank you guys so much for the awesome comments. I love to read them whenever you post them. And Jack here said that I should make a convict cislid swim bait. Uh, I probably butchered that name there, but it definitely looks like a pretty fish, and I think it'd be fun to make. I have a bunch of other ideas that I've been planning before uh, possibly making this, but you never know what can happen, so uh, make sure you keep posting those cool ideas, and maybe they'll come to life. So again, thank you guys so much, and enjoy the rest of the video. So here's the basic shape so far. I still have a lot of sanding to do. I cut out the slot there for where the tail fin's going to go. So now I just have to cut this out and install it and then work on the top fin. And then we can finally get to working on the joint and then sanding a bunch and uh, getting the lead and everything. So there it is. All right, so here's the fin all finished up. I had all the lines already. So now I just have to install it. But I think I'm just going to add a uh, little bit of gill structure on the front with the Dremel real quick. And then we can get to this and then also the top fin. So there's the back fin. All right, so I skipped ahead a couple steps here. I started with uh, the joint here. I installed the top fin, and I also drilled all the holes for where the lead's gonna go, and also where the line ties and hook hangers are gonna go. So down here, I'm gonna have a little bit of lead in the front, uh, main lead in the middle here, and then a little bit of lead in the back piece. And so now I'm just gonna add as many drops, and I'm probably gonna go drop by drop, let that uh, dry and sit, and then see how it sinks, just to make sure that I get the right uh, kind of balancing level with the lead in the wood. So we'll see how that goes, and now it's time to add the lead. All right, now it's time for everybody's favorite part. Anyway, there's the joint. So uh, now we're going to add lead, and I'm probably going to add just a little bit of uh, prototype joint connections just to make sure it's as realistic of a drop as possible. So now I'm going to go do that. All right, so I added around seven drops on these uh, bigger holes here, and then around two on the smaller ones. So we'll see how it works. All right, so it's upright, that's good. Looks like the top's a little more, or the front end, the head end, is a little more over water, or on top of the water than the back end. So I have to add a little more drops, one or two more drops there. And then also the clear coat and everything will help that um, sink better, but it looks like it has a decently slow rise, but not, not too much. So I think I'm gonna add a couple more drops to the front, and then, uh, see what I can do there but yeah pretty cool all right here's test number two and I added a couple more drops to the front two holes here and uh I even added the front line tie so that'll add a little weight to the front so here we are wow too much it's a slower sink but just a little too much. And it's an even sink, that's a good part though. And we still have to add like all the treble hooks and the bottom uh, hook hangers and everything, so there's gonna be more weight added. So I think I'm gonna take a little bit of weight out on both sides and it should be perfect. So. Alright, so what you guys just saw there was me making the different line ties and hook hangers. Basically just putting the wire, mending it over the uh, nail there and spinning it with the drill and you get this really cool little uh, thing to use to tie your hooks to, or uh, connect your hooks to and also tie your line to. And so then once you want to make the joint connection, really you just have to take that nail out of the vise and then bend your wire right there in the little eye and then put 
about half of it in your vise. Just pinch it in your vise. And then when you run the drill through there, it'll do the same thing, except then it'll be connected. So it's pretty cool how that works. But I'm gonna do these two joint connections and then we can get onto the eye sockets. All right, so here it is all put together. Uh, these joints I have in there are just for the painting process. And then I'll take them out and then clear coat them and then put the actual joints in just to make sure that the action is perfect or as close to perfect as can be and that the joints don't get gunked up with all the paint and clear coat and everything. But there's all the line ties and hook hangers all together in there. And, uh, I'll sand it pretty well. And so uh, now it's time to get painted. All right, so this is the first time you guys get to see my new airbrush setup. So this is the Master Airbrush. Uh, model G233 set and uh, this is pretty cool. It comes with a bunch of stuff uh, Different needles and everything just in case it bends. Um, I'm not sure where my last needle was I think I lost it But anyway, that one was really bent and that didn't really didn't give me any help with uh, trying to airbrush and everything So uh, it also gave me different nozzle ends and everything just in case this one gets all gunked up and I can't clean it So so with this one, it's really cool. It has a nice guard here and uh, I use it I think two or three times and it's pretty easy to clean and Works really good. I, I think by far uh, way better than the last one. And uh, I'm just going to clean this up a little bit. It's still a little bit dirty from last time, but I try to make sure that it's always clean whenever whenever I'm done with it. So uh, we're going to be using this one today. And I also got a new uh, air compressor that I'll show you guys then, but it's a pretty sweet setup. Here's the air compressor that I also got. Um, this came separately with it, without the airbrush, obviously. And uh, it's definitely a pretty cool air uh, compressor and has this little thing here. I never had this one I didn't have on the last one. Last one I had was just this little black box that compressed air. It did pretty well, but this one you can control the PSI and everything and make uh, my job much easier. And uh, it's pretty neat. Works really well. And uh, another thing that came with the uh, the airbrush was this little uh, air control system. I forget what it's called, really, but uh, you can kind of control the airflow that goes in and out of the airbrush. And I don't use it too often, but when I do, it's really handy. So that's a pretty neat uh, thing to have. But, yeah, there's my setup, and let's get to painting. Here's the black scales, and then we're also going to add some, uh, probably some white scales and stuff, just to make it seem more of a shiny, attractive look to it, but this mesh, by the way, is from uh, one of those aquarium fishnets, so just cut that off and it works really well, and uh, I already finished up the tailpiece with the black scales, so now we just got this side, and then we get to add more detail with the scales, like I mentioned, so there it is. I was going to use a pearlescent white, but... I chose silver because I already have the eyes picked out here and I don't know if you can see there but there's more, definitely more of a silver tint to it so I thought that'd be a good touch for the scales instead of a, a whiter color so that's why I picked that. All right, so here's the finished product, and I think it turned out really cool. I love the different colors on it and just how it works together really neatly. So, uh, Also, if you guys have any ideas on how I can uh, kind of show you guys the action in my shop uh, during the wintertime when I can't necessarily go out and fish, 
Um, I'm definitely open to ideas. I'm trying to figure out some certain stuff. I tried a fish tank, but that doesn't necessarily work because it's not big enough. So you can see, like, the full action of the lure. So if you guys have any, have any ideas, let me know down in the comments. It would definitely be helpful. And, uh, again, thank you guys so much for watching. God bless, and we'll see you in the next one.